Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel. I almost forgot what it was called there, but I am Gemma. Hello and welcome, and um, I bet you thought we were done with the Crumbs and Doilies book. You'd be wrong. We are not done with it yet. No, we know that lots of you don't have the book yet and that some of you aren't in a position to buy it just at the minute. And we also know from your feedback that loads of you really like having a video to go along with those recipes in the book. Uh, it just helps you to visualize what it's supposed to be like and it helps you recreate the recipes perfectly. So this one's for you. I think you're gonna love it. It's one of my favorite cookies. It's actually Nikki's recipe. Nikki is hanging back there in the background there taking pictures of me. <laughs> She developed this recipe for what is the perfect chocolate chip cookie. Now you guys know, we all love a New York cookie. We've got loads of recipes for those on the channel and in the book, but sometimes you just want a really good old fashioned chocolate chip cookie. A little bit crisp around the edges, a little bit chewy in the middle, and Nikki spent years perfecting this recipe. She tried loads and loads of different things, baked them loads of different ways, came up with this absolute belter. We stuck it in the book, and now it's yours forever, and I'm gonna show you how to make it. And I make this all the time for all sorts of things, like making friends. You wanna make some friends? Make these cookies. So, the first thing you're gonna need to do is burn some butter, because these are super deep in flavor, and that's thanks to this burnt butter and also the brown sugar. And we need to make sure that the butter is like a cool liquid before we use it. So um, if you are a bit of a pro and you've already got burnt butter in your fridge because you like being prepared, then get 185 grams of that out and just melt it gently and then leave it to cool. If you are making it from scratch, then you are gonna need to start with about 225 grams of unsalted butter. The reason being is there's loads of water in butter and when you cook it, it will evaporate out. So all you need to do is put your butter into a saucepan over a medium heat, let it start to melt, and then once it's sort of all melted, you wanna get your spatula in there and just give it a good stir every now and then. You'll notice that the milk solids and the butter start to separate out and eventually over time, they'll start to brown and go a really lovely rich gold color. Um, and you'll start to smell this lovely nutty buttery smell and it's all delicious. Um, and when you're satisfied with the number of um, brown flecks in your butter, then you can take it off the heat, pour it into a bowl and just leave it to cool. And what you end up with is this like golden elixir, which actually has loads of little brown toasty nuggets in the bottom of it and it just, I mean, that would be quite disgusting if I drank it, but I kind of want to because it smells really delicious, but I'm not going to, not today. Uh, <laughs> oh, what am I putting it down for? I need to put it in my bowl. So 185 grams of that going into the bowl and make sure you scrape all of the good juicy bits from the bottom. Um, they are where all the flavor is. So don't waste any of it. And then you want to add 215 grams of light soft brown sugar. And then I'm just gonna mix that together with a whisk. So we don't need any fancy pants um, equipment here. We're just going to combine everything, starting with the whisk. And I'm not gonna like whip it or anything. I just wanna make sure the ingredients are combining. All right, that's all we need there. So next you wanna add your eggs. And I'm going to add one whole egg and one egg yolk and then add two teaspoons of vanilla extract and then grab your whisk back and give it a really good stir to combine it all. Lovely, and then when that's all mixed together, switch up your utensil to a spatula because now we're going to fold the dry ingredients in. So grab yourself a sieve and you can put it all in directly over the top. So I've got 220 grams of plain flour and I'm going to add a teaspoon of sea salt and three quarters of a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda just to give it a, a little bump in the oven. And then just whisk that through, whisk that through, sieve that through, we've said goodbye to the whisk, we don't need him anymore. And then just grab your spatula and fold it all through gently. Not too much mixing. We don't want to like go crazy with the gluten, guys. Uh, now the last thing is the chocolate. Now these cookies are, they're pretty much more chocolate than cookie, to be honest. There's so much chocolate. There's a mixture of dark and milk. And I have used, um, bars of chocolate which I've chopped up rather than like chips just because I like the irregularity of the shape when I bake it um, if you want a kind of neater like cartoon like 
uh, cookie, then you go nuts and you have your little chips. But I am sticking with these. So I've got 200 grams of dark chocolate, 200 grams of milk, and I'm going to put almost all of it in to the bowl, uh, but holding some back just so that I can use a few of those little bits to stud on top of each cookie when I bake it. And then just using your spatula, just fold those through gently. You want to make sure they're as evenly spread through the mix as possible. Now they're all mixed through, but the dough is really soft. So to make it easier to handle and roll into balls, I'm going to put my dough into the fridge for 30 minutes at least. My dough is nice and firm, which is gonna make it so much easier to handle. I'm wearing gloves because I'm just neat and tidy like that. And I've also got my oven preheated to 170 degrees C. As usual, we always use a fan assisted oven. So if you don't have a fan assisted oven, just add 20 degrees onto that. Let's do this. So I have my trusty digital scales here. If you don't have a set of digital scales yet and you've been watching this channel for a while, then I don't know what's up guys, you know how I feel about this. It's grams all the way. So I'm gonna make my cookies 50 gram nuggets. So I'm gonna stop, turn on my scales, that's a good start, and try and weigh out 50, oh my gosh, oh, 48, so close. There we go. And then just use your hands just to squeeze it and roll it ever so slightly into a ball. And then pop that onto your baking sheet and we'll come back to that at the end to put more chocolate chips on it to make it look extra chocolatey. Not that it really needs it, there's so much chocolate in it already. Anyway, let's roll. Lovely. Now you might have a little bit of cookie dough left. Don't despair, that's a good thing, right? So you can just pop that back into the fridge and bake them after you've baked these guys. Or you can roll them into balls, put those balls in the freezer for emergency cookie situations, which we are all familiar with. But I'm just gonna go ahead and bake these. So I'm gonna pop them into the oven for seven to nine minutes. It's not long, guys, don't be fooled. Don't go the classic 10 or 12. This is a seven to nine situation. And what you're looking for is for the edges to be slightly brown and crispy and the middles to be a little bit wobbly. Here they are, delicious baked cookies. Now these have actually been cooling for about half an hour, maybe even a little bit more, and they are still molten on top. Lovely chocolatey goodness all over the place. And um, you'll notice that they're really nice and circular. That doesn't always happen naturally in the oven. Sometimes they come out a little bit like, whoop. And if that happens to you, all you need to do is grab yourself a cookie cutter that's slightly bigger than the cookie itself, pop it around the top and just wiggle it around just to tease it back into a circular shape. And I also finish these cookies off with a sprinkling of flaked sea salt because I like it salty, guys. If you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. These are your cookies, but frankly, these are the most perfect cookies and I'm going to prove it by eating one. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's almost like... Well, it's still super molten inside. Okay, hang on. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. There's a little bit of crispiness from the edges, but then after that, it's all soft. Mmm. I've probably got a lot of chocolate in my teeth right now. <laughs> Good looking, right? And look at that massive, massive pockets of chocolate oozing out absolutely gorge oh my gosh it's disintegrating i better eat some more <laughs> well thank you very much for joining me i really appreciate you being here watching me get all messy and chocolatey and full of yummy things don't forget you can subscribe to this channel Has anyone can anyone tell me if i've got chocolate all over my face because i actually feel like i do okay cool you can subscribe to the Cupcake Gemma channel, that's totally free. And if you do do that, make sure you click on the little um, alarm bell and that will let you know every time you upload a new video. 
But if you really want to support the channel and help us to keep creating all this great content for you and just let us know that you love us, <laughs> you can also join our Bake Club over on Patreon. We'll put the link down there so that you can join. And we really appreciate all of you who do that. It's quite a lot of you now and we, we appreciate all of you, especially at the moment when it's not like money is growing on trees. I'll be back next week with one of my favorite confections, which is fudge. Uh, really simple and really delicious. But until then, if you make these, make sure you hit us up on the socials, put them on Instagram, put them on TikTok, tag us, Cupcake Gemma. You can even tag me. Tag Nikki because she was the mother of this cookie. Um, and I'm, she's actually, I've been quite nervous cooking these with her just standing right there because, oh, just in case I did it wrong, but. You did amazing. Oh, thanks girl. <laughs> Well, they taste pretty good, so hopefully I did okay. But anyway, take pics, pop them on your socials, let us know how you got on, and we will see you next time. Thanks for coming. Bye. Okay, even though I've got loads in my teeth, there's more going in. Maybe this, this gooey bit.